brains are incredibly complicated and work out amazing things every second of our lives. Yet when given white fur to draw or paint, we struggle to see value and colour and tend to see just white. You'll hear artists saying countless times white fur isn't white and they're right, it's not. White fur reflects the colours from the environment around the animal. If the dog is sitting on a patch of grass, you'll have green reflected. If there's a blue sky above, blue will be reflected. And the light that's hitting the fur will add all kinds of colour. Inside it tends to be yellowy, outside more cooler. Not only are there a multitude of colours in white fur, there are also shadows, mid-tones and of course highlights. And what will make your white animal stand out is if you use a range of values to help shape the subject so you can see the structure under the fur. Many people opt for using a toned or black background for white subjects as they see it as easier and and of course the white pencil stands out straight away. But this can have a counter effect as the dominant colour used will be white. Drawing white on white is challenging but it really enables you to look at the values and make choices around what colours and values you want to use. In this video I'm going to show you an easy digital way of looking at colour and determining the value and then show you briefly the colours and lay down of values when drawing a very white dog. So I'm just going to show you how to create a digital viewfinder and then a few little tips for drawing white fur. <clears throat> so I'm using Photoshop here. I've got my image on one layer here and I've just created a new layer here. Now this isn't a Photoshop tutorial. Um, this is just showing you how I do it. So on the layer up here, I draw a, a box. So I just draw a square in there. Um, and I'm going to colour that white. And then inside that box, I'm going to put a circle. Oops, I'm just going to find the centre-ish. So I'm just going to put a little circle in there. And I'm going to delete that circle so that we can see what's underneath it. Okay, that is my little viewfinder now on this layer here. So you can do exactly the same thing if you're using a printout, just punch a hole in a white piece of paper. This is basically to show you that white fur isn't white. Our brain has a mechanism where it, it, it basically, if, if it's white fur, we, we kind of see it as white, which is really, really frustrating because white fur isn't white. Um, and basically you can then move this across your image and you can see all of the different colours underneath. So even with the very, very white areas, so we'd, we'd sort of look at this area here on the cheek and we think, oh, that's really white. We can see it's not. We can see actually it's quite a, a cool grey colour with a little bit of yellow in there as well. Over here, it's the same. It's not white. Very cool grey in here. Up here, actually, this is really quite dark. We've got some lighter hairs running over the top of it, but underneath that's really quite dark. Over here, this is really quite dark. Under here, this is really dark. Now, when you're looking at this, you wouldn't expect to be using like a walnut brown or a dark sepia or something like that within your white fur. But actually, when you look closely and you isolate those colors and the values from the rest of the picture, you can see just how dark it is. Um, so this is a really, really easy way of looking at your colours and determining value uh, and then deciding on what colours you're going to use. Another great way as well to use this is to just look at the colour picker. So I'm just going to choose my colour picker there and I'm just going to click on the image. You can see at the top there, we've got white at the bottom and it's picking the image up at the top. If you want to use this as a, as a picker for using your colours, you can. I wouldn't re really recommend it. I I like people to learn how to use their colours without using an app to pick them. Um, I, I think in the long run, it's a it's much better for you and you understand colour theory and all of that kind of thing. But if you were to do it, you could see this is like a raw rumber 10% luminance colour. Um, down here, if I was to pick this one, this is like a cold grey one. Um, but you've also got to remember that when we work with colour pencils, it's all about layering and things like this don't tell you what, what layers to put in. Some colour picker apps do, but they come up with very random results, so I wouldn't recommend those. So using this little viewfinder is a really, really useful way of working out your values in a piece. Um, you know, isolating small areas of colour and value, and then it gives you an idea of what you can use in your drawing. 
When planning your colours for drawing white fur, I find it best to first determine the balance of warm and cool hues. And I like to mix my greys as it's inevitable that you will have a combination of warm and cool colours. Here I've used cold grey one um, and then a little bit further on I bring warm grey four in to start darkening up the eyebrow area. And it's always a bit scary as when you lay the really dark colours down it really does seem too dark but trust in the process as it will all work out beautifully in the end. And we really do need some of those darker, darker values in there to get the structure and everything of the animal's head. You may find that you need to add a few layers in to get the depth of the values in. I like to start nice and gently as it feels better that way. It's a little less scary. Work your layers in, switching from um, lighter colours to darker. Bring some colour in if you wish, blues and pinks and greys and uh, violets and all of that kind of thing. Um, but it's important to really watch your values and make sure you get those dark areas in. As you build your piece up, you'll find that it's much easier actually to start adding darker areas because you'll you'll see the form of the animal start to emerge. When you work in sections like I do, it's a, it is a little bit trickier to determine how dark you need to go. But once you've got kind of the whole the whole piece in there, the whole face or the whole section done, it is much much easier to work out where you need to darken areas up and where you need to lighten areas up. Just gently layering in over the top of your colours. I've used a sepia 10% here over the top of the raw umber, which is a much more yellowy colour. Using the violety colours in over yellows is always going to work really nicely. It's going to give you a lovely shadow effect, and that's due to purple and yellow being complementary colours. So any complementary colours are going to work really, really nicely. You do have to be a little bit careful about the mixing of the colours. So blue and orange, for example, are going to give you a greeny colour. So if you don't want green, then um, I would mix um, orange with violet again, which is a split complementary. Um, understanding your colour theory is... I think really important and it doesn't have to be complicated. There are some great books out there for colour theory. Some are far more complicated than others, but um, there are some quite simple ones as well, which um, I, I do recommend. There's a little book called Colour, What is Colour, which is a really good little book. I'm just using my slice tool here just to bring the whiskers in. Very easy to do on drafting film, which is what I'm using on this piece. Uh, and it enables us to kind of bring those brighter highlights back in, which work incredibly well over those darker elements. So just a reminder for drawing white animals on white paper, really concentrate on those values because it will bring your piece to life. Add colours in. Uh, you know, they look so, so nice adding a little bit of vibrant colour in there. But don't, I haven't used white on this piece at all. D don't fall into the trap of believing that white fur is white. There's so much colour in there and so many shadows and mid-tones. And then you can bring the highlights out as well. Um, and you are going to end up with some really, really super, super pieces. <laughs>